very old building in Chicago, and, and it had to come down. A, a, a new skyscraper was going to go up in its place, only they couldn't implode it. They couldn't implode it. They had to take it apart one floor at a time. When they got to the 49th floor, two construction workers found, they found a skeleton in a small closet behind the elevator shaft. They decided to call the police. The police came and they led them to the site. The skeleton was fully, fully clothed, standing up. And that worker said to the police, this could be somebody important. This could be Jimmy Hoffa or somebody, somebody else was important. Well, two days went by and the construction workers hadn't heard from the police. So they called the police and they said, they said tell us about that skeleton. Was it somebody important? Was it Jimmy Hoffa? They said, no, it wasn't Jimmy Hoffa. But it, but it was somebody important. In fact, it was somebody who was famous for being undefeated in his field. Who was it? Who was it? They said eagerly. The police replied, the 1962 national hide-and-seek champion. <laughs> when we went to Israel, I, I got to go to Capernaum, where Jesus lived in his adult life. I got to go to the synagogue site, uh, some ruins, uh, the synagogue built on top of the foundation of the synagogue Jesus actually preached in. I imagined him reading Isaiah. I imagined him uh, 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 sitting down, as they did in those days, to preach and to teach. And I stood where I estimated the spot might have been. And I just stood there and, 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 and soaked it in. It was a wonderful experience, but it, it was no more of a sacred place than this very spot where I'm standing right now to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I, I went to the River Jordan, and it was my privilege to baptize some people in the river. Um, it was a special moment, but it's no more of a holy place than that baptistry where people witness to their faith and commit to the Christian life. In fact, this space right now, this space that we're in, has been dedicated and consecrated to the worship of God, the proclamation of the gospel, the fellowship of the saints. This space is sacred space. In this room, people come to say goodbye to loved ones who have gone on to be with God. In this room, many couples, some of you in fact, have come to commit yourselves to holy matrimony, to a sacred state where two people become as one. In this room, beaming parents bring their babies and young ones to be dedicated to the Lord and to be introduced to a welcoming and loving Christian community. In this room, we gather every Sunday on the first day of the week to give God the first fruits of our labor. In this room, we come and join with Christian friends to fellowship, to read scripture, to sing, to laugh, to cry, to share our prayer concerns and pray together to hear sermons that help us on our Christian journey, and to feel the movement of the Holy Spirit among us. This is sacred space. Amen? And once in a lifetime, maybe once in a lifetime, you might come here and actually witness a pastor get married to a loving person like Susan. <laughs> this is sacred space. This is sacred space. And God, God has been good to us. God touched the heart of a man named Gene Hibbler. His mother, Etta Hibbler, was a devoted member of this church. Gene Hibbler was prompted by God to remember Bethany in his will, and eventually resources came our way. And 10% of those resources right off the top are being tithed to mission work. 50% of those resources are invested to generate future resources, and 40% became available to take care of God's house and to complete these projects and others in the future. That blessing that we received enabled us to upgrade our technology with video and enhanced sign and electric sign and all the rest. And today we celebrate the completion of a set of projects. It took a lot of resources, a lot of volunteer hours, struggle, learning to complete. So today we praise God and we say, it is finished. <laughs> nah, you're wrong. <laughs> It is unfinished. The projects are finished, but the work of the church is unfinished. For you see, the gospel needs to be proclaimed. Lives of 
still need to be amended. Children and teens need to be introduced to Jesus and challenged to follow Jesus in their attitudes and actions. The work of the church is unfinished. And our new sign, uh, you know, it's getting a lot of attention in the community. Everywhere I go, I was, I was at the auto place the other day, and the guy, he, he just started talking about our sign. Our sign's gotten a lot of attention in the community. In the, in the, in the Baptist Methodist wars, we're, uh, signage wars, we're winning. <laughs> Everywhere I go here locally, people are thanking me and the church for the messages of inspiration, the thoughtful challenges, the reminders of our common humanity and our humor. The sign is reflecting our common heart out into the community. And people ask me, is it true that some of your members went up to mobile mics and washed car windows for free? And I'm thanked repeatedly for the potatoes. I wasn't even here that Sunday, and I, but I hear all about the potatoes. We gave real potatoes to Open Door to distribute to the poor, along with some other food. And this past Thanksgiving, uh, uh, people got real potatoes uh, in their Thanksgiving dinner. Not, not instant potato flakes, which taste like carpet. <laughs> but they were, they were real potatoes. And we had fun doing it, didn't we? We touched so many people with our reverse offering, our blankets to the needy, our mittens and scarves that are warming children in, the, in, the, in this cold, the, the prayer mailbox, and soon a chapel, a chapel where our library used to be, where people will be able to come and pray when they are troubled. People from the community, people from the church, relatives, friends, a place to pray or find spiritual guidance. Look, the work in the church is unfinished. You might ask... Okay, but what do we do? How do we find, find our way forward? Uh, uh, you're leaving. Uh, but, uh, no, 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 no. I'm retiring. I'm not moving away. I'm retiring. I have to stay away for a while because uh, it's, it's in our code of ethics. Uh, ministers have to sign a code of ethics. Um, and, and, and an interim pastor is going to come, and, and it's going to be, you'll see, it'll be almost seamless. From me to him. Watch. Listen. There's no magic program. There's no secret formula. There just isn't. All Bethany has to do is be faithful about continuing the work of Christ. Get involved with the Julie Run of Open Door with our church. Join the activities of Bethany when we visibly show to our community that we care about them. Give your heart to our renewed purpose of serving our community. That's what Jesus meant by telling us to love God and love our neighbor. It's called the great commandment. Love God and love your neighbor. The great commandment is not two things. It's one thing. It's not the great commandments. It's the great commandment. One, singular. Remember this. To love God is to love your neighbor. And to love your neighbor is to love God. And if I don't leave anything else with you, I want to be sure that's etched in your mind. I want you to say it with me. Uh, I'll, I'll say it and then you repeat it. To love God is to love your neighbor. To love God is to love your neighbor. To love your neighbor is to love God. Renew your love for God today and remember your baptism. Renew your commitment to Christ. Make the effort to... Learn the ways of the kingdom of God. Let Jesus' lessons for living permeate your heart and soul and be a living example. Be a living example of what it means to be a Christian. Be part of Bethany as a living example of what it means to be a church, a loving, caring Christian community. Faithfully come to this sacred space and renew your commitment to Christ and to his church, Bethany. Thank God for the, the renovation projects are finished. Amen? But the work of the church is unfinished. Renew your commitment to Bethany and be part of completing that which is unfinished. Amen? Amen. Amen.